Hey, what's up? It's Comic95 Vestavia, and I don't want to make this video too long, but I wanted to say something that I've talked about on my channel um, a few times already and kind of explain my channel too, which will slightly seem contradictory, but I just wanted to tell those of you that are thinking about coming to Japan that you don't want to spend too much time watching YouTube videos, especially not on TikTok or Instagram. There are so many videos, and I say this as an influencer myself, I'm a YouTuber, I have a TikTok, I have an Instagram account, I use all of these social media sites, and I talk my trash and my good things about Japan too, but I want to say that if you spend so much time listening to information about Japan, like learn these words in Japanese, or don't do this in Japan, or Japan, you know, doesn't like this, or Japanese people don't like that whatever type stuff you will make yourself paranoid and afraid of ever stepping foot in this country and or when you do come here you're going to be a lot more afraid than you should be and i want to kind of walk you through a few things that make me really afraid of coming to japan i actually uploaded a video years ago before i came here i'm about you know am i afraid of coming here and i expressed all of my concerns i was afraid about the fact that i was really fat i was afraid about the fact that my skin is dark and the list just goes on i was ashamed of having curly hair and so many different things and not to say that I necessarily love these things about myself to this day, but it made me feel really afraid of being here. I was afraid that I was too tall. I was afraid that my skin was too dark. I was afraid that my features looked comical. Like everything about me that you could think of, I felt super self-conscious over. And it sounds like a lot of, you know, you know what, <laughs> considering, you know, how things are for me today. I would say, if anything, as I said before, I have a much easier, better time making friends here, dating here, everything is so much easier here in Japan. And I want to also explain to you that you need to keep in mind, these are YouTube videos. These are Instagram videos, these are TikToks. People's goal is to get your interest. Their goal is to, in my situation, rant and vent to you. Of course, I'm going to talk to you more about the negative and bad things that goes on in my day-to-day -day life because I want my channel to remain real and I want to share my opinions. And I'm like, yeah, that's not true. Of of course, there are plenty of things that I could think of being here in Japan where I'm like, yeah, I agree, this is delicious, or wow, this is really fun. But who wants 50,000 videos, everybody saying the same thing? It's much more interesting to have a video where someone's saying, hey, don't do this, or hey, this is weird in Japan, but okay, in your country, or, you know, things like that. So, not that the information isn't good or isn't true, but don't obsess over people or obsess over, you know, things and binge watch and you know do whatever like it's good to get information to gain knowledge and it's good to come into the country with some cultural background some language ability but if you're like how I am where you found yourself literally sleeping to you know I'm not going to give any channel names but going to sleep listening to Japanese going to sleep you know just constantly trying to I don't know <laughs> get your brain to get used to all of the sounds and sights and whatever you want to call it of Japan I'm like just try to instill this information in your mind, you're going to drive yourself crazy. For starters, you're going to forget all of that crap. I told you guys that I had tried to binge so much learning Japanese before I came here that when I actually got here and everything went completely, like, not as planned, I ended up having no cell phone, no Wi-Fi, no Japanese English dictionary, no Japanese language ability at all. I cannot read, write, nothing. Extremely shy, extremely self-conscious. My hair was sweated out. I was sweating like a pig. I was hot. I looked sloppy. I was nearly 300 pounds. Just everything was bad, okay? And with that said, my flight was late, so I had trouble connecting with, you know, my taxi that I had, you know, prearranged. Like, just everything went wrong. And I couldn't even remember how to say thank you in Japanese. I think, I don't, do you even say it in English? I might have said you're welcome or something. I don't remember what I said, but I completely messed up everything. And luckily for me, things didn't go as I expected to. I told you guys also that I was so anxious and paranoid. I kid you not. I was afraid to even look out the window during my taxi ride. I didn't want to make eye contact with anybody because I was afraid of people laughing at me or thinking badly of me. You know, just everything else. And even like making a YouTube channel, I was afraid of people not liking me. And I'll be completely real with you. Like getting your first dislike or first like hate comment or, you know, whatever, like it throws you off guard, especially like considering that back then I didn't make like my little snappy, angry videos. I didn't do journals. I didn't do rants back then. The closest that I got to it was me talking talking about my um, feelings towards racism in Japan and I got a lot of hate for that and ended up deleting that video and now I couldn't even fathom doing something crazy like that so my point is not to talk so much about myself but rather you if you spend so much time especially if you happen to be a black person listening to all of these white people telling you what Asians think about black people and watching all these videos telling you 
oh, Asians don't like this or they don't like whatever and Japanese people don't like this about you and this, that, and the other, you will come here being paranoid. And I hate to say this, but again, I'm not going to give any channel names. Y'all know who I'm talking about. Y'all Y'all can look up the stuff for yourself. I really get upset. This is the reason why I don't collaborate with other people. I feel like a lot of people use blackness, unattractiveness, ugly people, or, or people and things that are deemed to be that. Do not get me wrong. I'm not saying that black people are synonymous with that, but I'm saying that they might as well just say that to do these videos and documentaries on etc not just because it sparks people's interests but because it gives them money like i'm not being some sort of guinea pig or whatever sob story for some white person's channel for them to pretend like they really give a s about you know <laughs> what's going on with black people issues black people problems etc and i feel like a lot of it not that you want to hide and lie and pretend like things are perfect when they're not but a lot of it just reinforces those things because i've literally i cannot tell you how many times being here in japan both american canadian european etc people and even some japanese people but normally it's white people i get more questions from white people than anyone else they will ask and say really rude and ignorant things to me and they'll say things like wow like you have a Japanese boyfriend your fiance is Japanese really oh wow I thought that's a they'll literally directly basically indirectly but directly tell you they're shocked that you were able to get into a relationship with a Japanese person because you're black and because of all of these stereotypes about what your personality is supposed to be like and it's like all of those stereotypes about japanese people you know not liking or wanting to date or marry foreign women is a lie it's bullshit but who spreads this stuff of course white men that come to japan everybody's reading the same books everybody's watching the same videos and people are also not realistic with the reason why they go through the crap and drama that they do yes if you come to japan and you have a nasty stink attitude your pussy stink and you're ugly and all you saw to this was i'm black so nobody likes me because i'm black and you make a video talking about oh nobody likes me because i'm black but then it's like girl your pussy stink girl you ugly it ain't got shit to do with the fact that your skin is dark or anything else explain me explain the countless dark skin legitimately dark skin like as in chocolate complexion and darker black women here that are married have children that are doing just fine everybody doesn't have a youtube channel here that's black and married in japan everybody doesn't care for having a social media presence everyone's not trying to be a socialite whore like how us youtubers tiktokers whatever our instagrammers are inside of this social space this community and i'm getting on myself too my point is i get really sad and frustrated when i read emails and comments from people where they're like oh like um what did just do what do japanese people think about me and this or whatever and so of course it makes it makes money for me i can make a youtube video on your thought and idea but i just want to say like as a friend being real with you don't spend so much time looking into all of this crap not that you don't want to know it is good to be informed but you know what i mean with balance do not literally find yourself trying to make a list of words you need to memorize a list of things you need to remember that japanese people don't do for example some of the most commonly repeated lies even from japanese people because again their goal is to make money all of these japanese people on instagram trying to teach you japanese language and trying to teach you about their culture showing you places to go etc on instagram they are doing it for money their goal is to capitalize on how cool fun weird and different japan is they're not having the time of their life. They're literally spending all day long editing videos for TikTok, spending all day long finding things. What's totally normal, nothing special about it, but that I can exaggerate to my foreign audience and make money off of and get followers from. That's exactly what they're doing. And it's cool. It's a business. I totally respect and understand it. But I'm saying for you to keep in mind that what they're doing is to make money. For example, like I was saying, the whole concept of tipping. Tipping people is not rude here and neither is placing money in people's hands. However, people don't normally expect for you to do it. That's just their culture here. It's not because it's rude. It's just that they don't do it. There's no culture of doing it. It's not that they don't need it. It's not because their salaries are good. It has nothing to do with any of that type of crap. They just don't do it. I've tipped people here several times and they most certainly will take and accept your tip if you leave it for them as long as they're placing it directly in their hands. It's normally not done in the restaurant, but for example, if you're getting food or something delivered to you, especially from an American company like Uber Eats, they most certainly will, can, and do, and they want tips. They need money. They are underpaid. Do not fall for that BS. No, I'm not telling you, go and leave a $20 bill on the table after your meal. No, because they will chase you down. But it's not rude to do so. That's a lie. Also, another lie that keeps being told is, oh, don't place money in people's hands. It's rude, whatever. It goes back to this whole ancient day, whatever type of crap, where it was rude for you to even look the person in the eyes. I forgot who it was, but samurai type, whatever crap. I don't remember all of that garbage. I'm keeping it real with you. I'm not going to do my research for this video. I'm telling you what I've learned from both dating and being friends with Japanese people and working with them. It's a lie. It's not disrespectful on this 
this day and time. However, it makes things easier for the cashier in most circumstances for you to just place inside the tray. They have little like finger grip like things to make it easy for them to grab it. It allows them to see without having to touch the money so there's no confusion what exactly you put down inside the tray. It's not rude. It's not disrespectful. And in some circumstances, especially when there's not a tray, it's preferred if you place it in the person's hands. Now, of course, with this whole COVID situation, now there are mixed opinions and feelings. Some people prefer that you put it down the counter and touch your hand directly. But all of that crap becomes stupid, too, because the money has been in your hands. So even if your hands don't touch their hand directly, something that's been sitting inside of your sweaty palms is now on their hands. So it's, it's a lot of crap. Long story short, if you listen to all of these stupid YouTubers and effing lying Japanese people and foreigners that don't know any better that are just repeating recycled information, you will believe that this stuff is true. You will become paranoid about doing these things. You will become paranoid about yourself. Everything else, super obsessed over everything. For example, all of this talk about what Japanese men want you to weigh, what they want your what they want your personality to be like. All of this crap is a lie. Explain me. Explain me. I'm classified as borderline petite in the U.S. I'm considered to be an average to short girl in America. But in Japan, I'm on the border of being considered tall. I'm also on the border of morbid obesity here. But in the U.S., I'm a pretty average weight. I am currently wearing a size 10. And at my smallest weight that I've been here, I was a size 8. And even with that said, I'm a total fat ass here in Japan. And guess what? I have no problem getting men to date me and want to marry me. I've been in several circumstances where I could have already been married at this point. If you spent all of your time watching YouTube videos, reading blog posts, watching people on TikTok tell you Japanese people like these super real thin girls, you have to look like this, your skin has to be this white, your eyes have to be this big, your hair has to be this long, don't have curly hair, don't do this, don't do that, you need your breasts like this, your butts are like that, your legs are like this, you have to have this personality. Japanese people don't like American girls, they don't like foreign girls because they act like this. Japanese people don't like black girls because they do. If you listen to all this garbage, you will go insane and you'll be like, oh, okay, never Never mind. I'll stay in the U.S. I'll stay in Italy. I'll stay in Germany. I'll stay, you know, wherever you come from. You will be paranoid. There is no one size fits all for anyone here in Japan. Yes, there are some cultural differences, some pretty big ones. Well, yes, their beauty standards are different. But you are not Asian and you are not Japanese. More than likely watching my video. Their standards for you are not going to be the same that they have for a Japanese girl. And even with Japanese girls, hello, they're men. They're still human. From man to man, they have different tastes. It is not some rarity exception to the rule for an Asian man to have interest in you. Would you like to take a look at my DMs? We can go on a scroll spree. The vast majority of them, about 90% of them, come from Asian men and specifically Japanese. I speak from personal experience. A lot of people aren't real with themselves with the reason why they're having trouble dating here. A lot of people don't even try. They have decided automatically that because of what they heard, read, and saw from other foreigners that are living here or that have lived here in the past, this is what people think of you. You want to know something really interesting that I saw? I'm not going, again, I mean no shade, no harm to these people. A lot of them, one, are just trying to get views and money like everybody else. And two, a lot of them really thought they knew better and they thought they meant well and they thought that they were helping people or doing whatever. But a lot of the information stuff that I got even from other black people here that were in Japan before I came here, many of which that have left at this point, I watched their videos. I was afraid of people saying racial slurs to me walking up and down the street. I was afraid of going to a bar or club and nobody wanting to talk to me because I watched these people's videos. I was afraid of being called out of my name from students and not to say that these things will not happen to you. Everyone looks differently. Everyone's black is different. I totally understand. Everyone has a different experience and story. And this is not to discredit theirs, but rather to say people take their experience and their story and decide this is everyone. And it happens a lot more with those of us that are people of color specifically black people and what I mean by that is for example you will not see a white person get on YouTube for the most part and say oh my god Japanese people don't like white women they don't like white girls or in reverse they don't like white guys they will explain in more detail what their situation was or they take it and understand people just don't like me because I'm not attractive I'm a short guy I'm an obese white girl they, they're real with themselves. And either they stay off of that topic on YouTube, or if they talk about it, they'll tell you the reason why I'm having trouble dating is X, Y, and Z. Like, the girls want this. They want a guy that got money. I ain't got that. Whatever. But it seems like whenever there's a problem with people of color, there's two things. One, they make no effort in getting out there and dating because they tell themselves, Asians do not like me because of my complexion, because of my race. 
Or number two, they immediately assume the reason why they're not being liked is because they are black and it has nothing to do with the fact that they're unattractive, the fact they're overweight, the fact that they're short, the fact that they're really tall, whatever the case is. And when everyone's feeding you that narrative that it's because of my race, it's my race, it's my race, it's my race, 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 what do you do? You think, oh my God, it's my race. Something's wrong with me because I'm black. People don't like me here. They're not going to accept me because I'm black. I'm sorry for making this video so long, but I had to. <laughs> Y'all know me by now. You go crazy. And so this isn't limited to a black issue. This goes for white people too. If you watch all of these videos on what not to do, don't be an ugly American, don't be this foreigner, don't be whatever, don't do this, a Japanese people do it this way, don't talk on the train, don't use your phone, make sure you know Japanese because this is Jap bull fucking shit. You don't need any of that crap. I've literally gotten into arguments with white people on my videos where I talked on my YouTube channel, just talking about Japanese language. And some of them are still subscribed to me to this day. People, oh, well, I like your channel, but I'm going to have to disagree with that. Literally, every single last person that disagreed with me on my topic where I was talking about how you don't need Japanese language ability to come to Japan, not a single person in that comment section made it to Japan. None of them are here. And I can guarantee you that if and when you do come here, you're going to find out that I'm right. I don't need to argue with you. I'm living here myself. It just amazes me that people have been so brainwashed hearing, learn these words. You need these phrases. Use for phrases for the past, um, for the passport, for the airport. Use for phrases for ordering food, etc. You really think that you need this stuff in order to eat here, in order to go and take a plane to come here. And you don't. Because for starts, people are going to prefer to speak to you in English anyway. They're going to assume that you can speak Japanese. And when they do use Japanese with you, they're often going to be speaking a dumbed down, slow, stupid, childlike version of it with you for the most part. And if you don't speak it, don't understand, they're going to understand that you do not. It's expected that you will not speak Japanese. The majority of foreigners that have been living here for 10 plus years do not speak a lick of Japanese. It's factual. And sorry, but truth be told, despite all of the misleading and articles and blogs and YouTube channels and big pages, and most people here can tell you that the majority of jobs that even hire foreigners, because mind you, Japan is not the U.S. It is 100% legal for them to be racist and decide that we do not hire foreign people, that we only hire Japanese people. Even if you are born and raised in Japan, you can get turned down from a job for being biracial, for looking Chinese, for whatever the case is. It's not supposed to be legal, but who's going to fight it? What judge is going to rule things in your favor? Nobody. And with that said, okay, we can tell you that being here in Japan, while yes, Japanese language ability can look good on your resume, depending on the job, for the most part, it is not going to result in a significantly higher salary. It will not significantly expand your job options. It doesn't. In fact, it helps people a lot more so that want to work retail jobs and or non-native English speakers that have more limited options than what foreigners do in general that are from native English speaking countries. That is what happens with that. Learning Japanese and getting, even if you have N1 certification as a native English speaker, it's not going to guarantee you no six. It's not even going to give you that chance for six figure salary. You're going to have the same job options as the person that has the N4, N5 level. You can brag to people that you can speak at an N1 level. You can get translation jobs, some journalism stuff. Like, for example, you want to work for Japan Times or something like that. But even then, that's going to be competitive. You're not the only person. And that's probably not what you want to do anyway. A lot of you all have inside your mind. I'm not going to come to Japan until I'm completely fluent in Japanese. In other words, cheap excuse for, I don't have the money, discipline, resources, or courage to come to Japan. So I'm going to make up BS excuses that I know I'll never accomplish to keep myself from coming here. Because let's face it, sweetheart, you're probably never going to get that in one. Let's face it, sweetheart, you're never going to save the $30,000 that you need to get your COE. That's the truth. But you don't want to hear that part of it. And do whatever you want to. It's your life. But I'm just saying, if you spend all of your time watching this and all this crap, you're going to be brainwashed. Because I was brainwashed. I Why would I not believe another black person telling me, don't come to Japan because they think X, Y, and Z about you? Why would I not believe my favorite YouTubers telling me, this is what people think about these people. This is what you shouldn't do in Japan. And it's not that it's entirely wrong. Yes, there are cultural differences. Yes, there are things that are okay in my country that aren't in Japan. And they're telling the truth. It's not that they're not true. It's that they're not true to the extent that people are making it seem like. Like you're going to be hated and shunned by society. And it's also not as extreme as you're thinking. In some cases, there are lies that are being spread around. Who cares? 
Who cares? You're going to break rules. It doesn't matter how much you think you've learned about Japan. It doesn't matter how smart you think you are. You are going to come here and realize that you're an idiot. Because there's going to be things that you say and do. And you're going to be like, what? That's not okay to do? There's a cultural difference with that? It had no idea. For example, I knew a ton of stuff about Japanese people being shy and not wanting you to make a big deal or seeing that of stuff. But I was so ignorant, I didn't realize that when I was having real talk conversations with my friends, like how I'm talking to you guys right now, that made Japanese people feel uncomfortable, whether they were male or female. They just don't talk like that. Their conversations with their friends stay shallow. They either joke about good times they had together with their friends, or it's conversation like, oh, the weather is good, isn't it? Oh my god, look, that ice cream looks so good, doesn't it? Wow, so nice today. What are you doing tomorrow? Super phony fake conversation. This is why they struggle with suicide and crap like that. They're not real with each other. I didn't know about that. I ignorantly ruined a lot of relationships by being too open, too honest with people. I didn't know that. I didn't know that it was a bad thing to come too early because I kept being told, oh, being punctual is so important. I have literally lost out on jobs and made employers mad because I came to an appointment 15 minutes early. Okay, like, in my experience, I would even come as early as 30 minutes or an hour if I'm going to hang out with a friend or meet with somebody for, you know, something work-related. I didn't say you have to see me right now. I'm just letting you know I'm in the vicinity. So if and when you're ready, I'm here. That has legitimately pissed people off cultural difference. I didn't know I need to bring a gift anytime I'm visiting a friend's house. I knew about omiyage. But like you see, little things like that, you will learn as you go. If you literally are sitting there with pen and paper trying to take notes, okay, don't do this. Take this treat. I need this omiyage. I can't come back to my friends once I have this gift. Nobody's expecting you to even have that shit. You're not Japanese. Stop. You don't need to bring a gift from abroad. It's appreciated if you do, but nobody is expecting omiyage from you when you go on your vacation. Nobody's expecting omiyage from you when you are coming from another country. I didn't know that though because what happened? I watched all of these videos from people that have been in Japan for, that have been in Japan for years, and I thought, of course they're telling the truth. Of course they know more than me. They're older than me. They're smarter than me. They've been here longer than me. They're married to a Japanese person. Why would they not be right? Their goal is to show you how weird, how cool, how interesting, and discipline you on how to be the perfect foreigner for coming to Japan. That is their goal. If you brainwash and hypnotize yourself, don't do this in Japan. Don't say this. Remember these words. Only speak Jap. You'll never want. You'll eventually get to the point where you're like, man, it's too many rules, too much crap. I ain't finna come here. Or if you do come here, you're gonna be like me. You're gonna spend your first year or at least few months being paranoid of effing up anything and think I can. I literally spent almost an entire year without going to a restaurant by myself. It's not a year. Was it a year? I think I made it almost a year. Why? Because I was afraid of not knowing how to enter the restaurant correctly. Because I was not prepared for that before I came to Japan. But I saw so many videos. Don't use English. They can't speak this. Don't tip. Don't do whatever. Don't do this or the other. And I was like, oh my God, this is too much. It's overwhelming. So the only time I went to a restaurant is when I was on a date. Or when I was with a foreign friend that could speak. Or a Japanese friend. That could speak Japanese. I avoided anything that could possibly cause humiliation, that could possibly cause me to make a mistake. Because I was paranoid. I thought I'm doing everything wrong and that I'm going to piss somebody off. Because it's not like how it is in the U.S. Although in the U.S. we have some situations like that too. Depending on the restaurant, you seat yourself. Sometimes the staff seats you. Sometimes there's a button. Sometimes there's a bell. Sometimes you have to call the staff. There's just all type of crazy crap going on. And it was stressful. Some places allow foreigners, some don't. Some places allow shoes, some don't. Some places you got to write your name down and wait. Some places you got to grab a number. Everybody's staring at you because you're a foreigner. And God forbid I got my curly hair out like this. So it's like there's all types of stuff that would drive you crazy and make you overthink everything. It's not that serious. It, re- it really isn't. Because for a lot of the people, even the Japanese people that you make upset... They've never even been abroad before. 
They don't know what it's like to be in a foreign country. They don't understand how many rules they have to relearn and understand and cultural differences, etc. For example, one of the biggest first challenges for Asians that come to the U.S. is learning how to take our public transportation. Because, man, you will get clobbered. I dated the guy that had that happen. It was so funny because I used to talk about it all the time. Whenever I get mad at people on the trains here, I said, wait until you come to Chicago, New York, they're going to F you up. I finally met a guy that came to Chicago. He lived there for almost 10 years for school. And he talked about how he had gotten on a train there and was rushing onto the train. He had pushed somebody. And that the man pushed him back and he almost got into a fight with him. It completely threw him off. Because in Japan, it's totally acceptable to do that rude shit. They don't see it as being rude. They push, shove, cut lines, everything here. It's cutthroat. You would never do that in Chicago. Ever. If you, unless you got a death wish or something. You'd have to have lost your mind. But in Japan, it's acceptable. A lot of them don't bother to look into that. Their research on going to the U.S. is be afraid of guns. Look out for this gang territory. Don't wear these colors. Learn how to hold a hamburger. Their whole thing is stupid, silly shit that don't no American give a crap about. Ain't nobody thinking you gang affiliated. You look ridiculous. Looking at an Asian man with <laughs> cornrows and a bandana, blue bandana on. Ain't nobody thinking your ass a crip in Chicago. We don't think that you... Well, I forgot the name of the, the gangs or whatnot. A, a gangster disciple type of, Ain't nobody worried about you. But this is the research that they do when they want to come there. They're worried about, how do I sound like a native speaker by using slang? How do I use too many curse words to the point where I'm going to be disrespectful, rude, and Americans are going to think that I'm an Aussie or something? They don't understand what they should be looking for. They look and listen to the fun, dumb crap they read online, that they get inside of books, that they get on YouTube videos. You are doing the exact same thing in reverse. A lot of the crap that you're listening to and watching, you're thinking, oh, they're a Japanese person. They're showing me where I should go. They're showing me what I shouldn't do in Japan. They are aware of the fascination with their country. They are aware that foreigners want to understand Japanese language, want to understand Japanese culture, etc. And they're like, oh... I can get a lot of money off of talking about this crap. So what do they do? They talk about it. They do it. And no shade to them. I'm just saying because they're trying to make money, you are being lied to. And then what happens? You as a foreigner, you reinforce these stereotypes. You reinforce these rules. You reinforce these must-haves, must-dos. And you do the same thing. And then you feed a new audience, a new generation of foreigners coming to Japan. They're now paranoid and doing the same crap as you. So that's it. Do what you want to. It's your life. I'm just telling you. Don't become paranoid. Don't spend too much time watching YouTube. Don't spend too much time watching TikToks. It's okay to listen, get information. But if you're literally sitting down with a notepad, like, okay, don't say these words. Don't look at this person. Look down, bow at a 30 degree angle. Nobody, nobody's expecting you to do that crap, sweetheart. You're not Japanese. They're grateful that you're trying. They will be impressed if you can just say, Hi, nice to meet you in Japanese. That's literally beyond. A lot of people actually like it if you say thank you to them in English. Because them's like, oh my god, I finally get to use English for the first time in my life. You can get by just fine here, nodding your head, pointing, and saying arigato to everything. <laughs> That's literally, hi, arigato. Only two words you need to know. Sumimasen. That's it. You good. You can use your fingers for counters. You ain't got to remember all that shit either. People over here making all these YouTube videos. Okay, say this for long items, for thin items, for pieces. Yes, it's good to learn Japanese and learn these things. But the problem is people are not capable of doing more than one, most people at a time. So what happens is you decide, okay, I need to learn Japanese language. I'm going to download Duolingo. I'm going to continue driving for Uber Eats and flipping bur burgers at McDonald's and pretend like by doing this, <coughs> excuse me, Pretend like by doing this, this is going to help me get here. I'm going to get to Japan as soon as I finish all of my lessons on Duolingo. As soon as I finish all of my lessons on Rosetta Stone, I'll be ready for Japan. All right, good luck. I don't know why you think, like, do they give, like, please inform me. Do they give out free plane tickets and visas for Japanese language ability? They don't, to my knowledge. You finna get a scholarship for getting the N1 certificate or something? There are scholarships you can get for coming here, but for most of them, it's not going to cover your entire tuition, especially not if you're, unless you're poor or something. And even then, the time you are going to spend on that 
would not have been worth it. Come here and learn as you go. Same thing goes for culture. No amount of reading books and watching videos on America, even watching the news, will prepare you for living in the U.S. Likewise, no amount of watching books, reading, listening to podcasts, listening to foreigners and Japanese people on any platform is going to prepare you for Japan. You have to come here and experience it for yourself. Everyone's experience will be totally different. You cannot say, oh, they're black like me, because I'm sorry, sweetheart. My black experience will not be your black experience. You don't look like me. We're not the same complexion. We're not the same height. We're not the same weight. Your hair isn't like mine. Your personality is not like mine. Everything about you is going to be different. Do not be fooled because we are both black. Likewise, white people do not think she has blue eyes like me. We're gonna have to, the only thing y'all probably gonna have a comment is people are gonna compliment your eye color. That's it. Simple as that. <laughs> so, and then even then, you have unpredictable things. Surprisingly, despite all the crap that you get from white people online, guess what? My most complimented features are my body, besides sexually. Mm. My lips. My eyes. And even, get this, my skin. Wow, can you believe that? Yes, me, a black woman. Yes, me, full lips and all. If you watch YouTube videos all day, you wouldn't think that's possible of happening. Even my hair. Normally when I date people or I'm friends with them and they find out that my hair is curly because I'm always wearing it straight, they're like, why do you straighten your hair? Oh my God, it looks so cool. I wish I had curly hair all the time. Watch YouTube. Curly hair is bad. People don't look like a poodle. Look at this ad. Look at this whatever. Dark skin is bad. People don't want to tan. But I'm not Japanese. Their standards for me are different. People compliment my skin. People compliment my lips. People think I have big eyes, ironically here. Yeah. It's complimented. Everything that you think you don't like about yourself, based on Japanese standards, forget it. Same thing even goes for height. That is for the average Japanese man when judging a Japanese woman. You are more than likely not a Japanese woman. Likewise, if white men were being judged the same way as foreign women judge Japanese men, then you would say that no Asian girl likes white men because their standards for white men are completely different than what their standards are for Japanese men. For example, your salary to start off with. Almost none of the white foreigners here would be married if Japanese girls carried those same salary requirements that they have for Asian men. Girls will faint over a dude that's a tall, blonde haired, blue eyed guy simply because he's attractive and they'd be willing to seriously marry him. A Japanese man? It depends. If you're extremely handsome, then sure. But if she's really serious and trying to have a family, working at 7-Eleven, being a language school teacher making twenty, thirty thousand dollars a year ain't finna cut it for a family. She's not gonna be cool with that. A lot of these girls are married to men that are not even tall for Japan. There are tons of 5'5", five, 5'7", five, five, seven, five, eight white and black guys here. But you are not being judged the same way that she would judge an Asian or in this case Japanese man. She knows that you're not Japanese. Your language skills suck as a foreign man. So guess what? No matter how well you can speak, read, and write in Japanese, more than likely, you cannot read kanji at an adult level. And with that said, your Japanese wife or girlfriend, she will always have to lead because you are not capable of fully understanding bills, fully understanding legal documents, fully being able to rent a property entirely by yourself. You can't understand everything that you're signing for. You cannot read everything on the menu. It doesn't matter how long you've been here. I've met and worked for people that are white and have been in Japan for 20, 30 plus years. And they still cannot read kanji on a Japanese adult level. And what happens? 
their partner, their husband or their wife takes over and leads. If you ask the average Japanese woman, does she want to have to place the orders at the restaurant? Does she want to have to schedule and make arrangements and book restaurants? No, she does not. But she accepts the fact you're a foreign man. He, she has to accept the fact she has to do this for you. It's a trade-off. If anything, it's easier for you as a foreign woman. Because your man is Japanese. He does all the work for you. He's supposed to lead. In fact, it's even easier for him to do it because now you're this dumb damsel that doesn't understand what's going on. He gets to show you around his country. I'm not going to get into the whole aspect of dating. I have other videos on these topics. But all I have to say is, if you spend so much time on YouTube and on TikTok, and like, oh my God, I can't come here because I look like this. Because I'm from this country. Or I don't know this language. Or I don't know how to do this by myself. And you'll never leave. You'll stay inside your home country for the rest of your life. Or you'll come here and you'll be paranoid and miserable and think you can't go out without other people. Listen to people to learn. But don't obsess over it. Don't believe everything, including me, that everyone's telling you. I try to say it on my channel as much as possible, but this is my experience, my opinion. When I make journals, I'm telling you what happened in my life. My experience cannot be denied. But don't take my experience and think this is going to be yours, even if it's good. Remember, this is what I experienced. You can work for the same company as me that I loved, and they treat you like trash. You can also work for the same company that treated me like trash, and they treat you really good. Everyone has different standards of living. Everyone wants different things out of their relationships, out of their jobs, and everything else you could possibly think of. So that's it. I can go on rambling, ranting about this forever. All I want to say is a lot of these videos that you're watching saying, don't do this in Japan, or please don't do whatever. And a lot of the, oh, especially when Japanese people, they oftentimes say crap for you not to do. And it's like, I see Japanese people be rude at restaurants more than foreigners do. I see Japanese people being rude and loud on trains more than foreigners do. But who is the stereotypical image of being disruptive? loud, maskless, everything else. Who? Foreigners. And typically white foreigners at that. And it's crazy because it's like, I've been on the train countless times. I've seen Japanese people take off their masks, take off their shoes, put their feet on seats, talk loudly on the phone, be drunk and fall over people, play video games, listen to porn. And everybody turns a blind eye. Nobody sees. Can't be a Japanese person. But as soon as a white guy gets on that train with no mask on, everyone taking pictures, angry, grunting, making racist remarks. And it's like, okay, you might be mad at that person. But the moment you start saying crap like, uh, why are they letting uh, nasty foreigners in, uh, American, whatever, well, why are you assuming he's American because he's a blonde, for starts? Secondly, even if he is American, how racist is that? Now, these are the same people that will get upset about all this, you know, stop Asian hate, whatever crap. In the U.S. And it's like, look at how you treat us when we're in your country, though. Y'all treat foreigners like trash. But then you want us to worship you when you come to our country. But we ain't finna talk about all of that crap. All I gotta say is... <laughs> it's interesting that all of these channels and videos and posts or whatever are telling you to be paranoid. Telling you to not make these mistakes. Telling you, you are an F up. You are a foreigner. You're going to do everything wrong. Don't bring your American, European, whatever ways to this country. And it's like, they come to your country and they F up everything there too. Especially, especially about language. How many Japanese people learn how to speak European languages besides English before traveling to Europe? You will literally read people's profiles and they'll be like, I lived in France for 10 years. And then it'll say, but I can't speak French. I lived in Italy for five years, but I can't speak Italian. You live in Japan for 30 days and they're like, please learn Japanese. Excuse you? <laughs> and so it's like, and then unlike those languages that I just named, because at least those languages can be used for business. Japanese is one of the most useless languages to learn. The yen is weak. It is a little inky-dinky island country. Nobody learns Japanese in order to do world business. English makes more sense. In fact, Chinese makes more sense to learn if you want to learn a business language. Japanese is a waste. It's for fun. These people will preach advice they don't take and follow themselves. They come to the U.S. and they don't understand crap. They do this rude and nasty. Like, for example, not washing their hands, coughing on you. I can give a whole list of crap. They like reinforcing the stereotypes about how great and weird and cool Japan is. Because they have a lot of nationalistic pride here. 
And a lot of foreigners want to make money, want to give views, want to get followers, and want to believe this is some sort of magical fairyland. There's plenty of great and wonderful things about Japan. That's why I've chosen to live here and make this my home. Don't get me wrong. But I've also learned to separate reality from fictional nonsense. From personalized experiences, opinions, and BS. That's it. <laughs> so, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. If you're living here in Japan, if you've traveled here, please leave your two cents down below. Like, have you experienced things that you read about and saw and watched or whatever? And when you came, it's like, eh, that's not true. Or this wasn't my experience, etc. And, yeah, I mean, like, it's totally normal to be paranoid and afraid of making mistakes. It's totally normal to want to know and understand the country that you're going to. It's totally normal to want to blend in and to want to assimilate and to want to fit in. Those are not bad things to do. But I'm saying that when you let it consume you, when you obsess over it, it does become bad. So don't be ignorant and be, you know, the so-called ugly American and get off the planet. Like, oh, I'm going to do everything to America. I'm going to talk at the top of my lungs. I'm going to dress like a whore. I'm not advising or advocating for that stuff. But I am saying, give yourself the time to learn, adjust, and make mistakes. Do not try to put yourself through pre-Japan boot camp and look at every video on what not to say, what not to do, every word you need to learn, and all of this crap. Because I can guarantee you ain't going to use any of that crap, especially for the videos like ordering in restaurants and counter numbers and going to immigration passport. You don't need none of that type of stuff. Because they don't expect you to have Japanese language ability to begin with. They don't expect you to understand their culture. Nobody's expecting you to bow. No one's expecting omiyage. If you want to learn these things, that's cool to do. But the problem is, again, most people are not just looking at it to get information. They're looking at it as a form of readiness and preparation. They're binge watching my videos, other people's videos, for the purpose of trying to make themselves foolproof, perfect for Japan. And that is a mistake. Watch, listen to, and read content for enjoyment. To educate yourself. But don't take this stuff and be like, this is going to be my experience or I have to do this because you don't. And it more than likely won't be your experience. Even if it's good, it probably won't be your experience. So that's it. Again, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. If you haven't already, please leave me a like, subscribe to my YouTube channel, leave a comment down below. And yeah, um, you can also follow me on my um, social media accounts. All of my links are down in the description box below. I have YouTube playlists on various topics here in Japan, from living, working, dating, studying, anything that you can think of. So please check out my YouTube channel's homepage. Other than that, I hope you will watch a another video. That is my phone, so that's my time to go. I hope you're watching the video. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Bye.